Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo for another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. This one is going to be my take on version 2.4 for the PTU. I believe this is patch H. Frame rate is just horrible, but let's talk about some of the things that they added. There's like all these cool new zones inside of Point Olisar. Um, some of them are laid out incorrectly. Like I would have put a TV down there, rearranged the furniture and put the... Um, vending machines right in the middle, but who cares? Um, frame rate is terrible. Um, when you first get into it, though, it is actually pretty decent. It's running around 60 as opposed to about, sorry, about 30, as opposed to like 60 to 80 that I get in the hangar right now. Now, I'm sure that's because I only have one ship loaded there, and we'll go talk about that in a little bit. They are getting all these little shops added to Point Alasar. Over here, you see Cassaba. There's, on the other side of this part of the station, you'll have a weapon shop and you'll have a um, shop where you can buy flight suits. Something I will warn you about is that you really need to make sure you have your flight suit on before you go into the airlocks or you will die. The second thing is the flight suits that you purchase on in Area 18 do not have jetpacks that I see, and I purchased one, and now I have no money, and I'm screwed, and I need to figure out a way out of that. I will look at the patch notes and look at the forms and update you on my next video on how to get past that. But what I kept on getting in this one is exactly this. I couldn't get to any of my ships, so you're going to see me go around and round and round here while I talk to you a little bit. The patches this time had this Illuminati type people, the Evocati, that actually did the first um, four or five patches. They were doing the playtesting, and that got it to the point where at least it was semi-stable for us. Now, when you first come into the game, you are going to be faced with persistence, and persistence means that the things that you do in point, Port Alisar are going to follow you through each logon. So if your ship needs to be repaired, um, the credits that you earn, the missions that you've done theoretically are going to follow you through time. So they're going to be persistent. Um, say, so is reputation that you gain and um, different um, other things that I can talk about. It doesn't seem to be the case in the hangar. Some things in my hangar stay where I put place them. Some things don't. Um, weapons that I change out on a ship is persistent, but a poster I hang up on a wall or a jukebox I put somewhere seems to be non-persistent. So there's still things that have to be worked out. I found the biggest challenge here to be the remapping of all the keys. All the keys have been remapped, or I should say most of them have. So please be sure to look at the um, keyboard control, well, the control map before you go into the game and remap all your keys to the controls that you use, whether it be mouse and keyboard, gamepad, or joystick, well, HOTUS, joystick and throttle. Something I didn't really get done. All right, so not a whole lot has changed in the course of what missions you fly, but there are better, sh well, there is a new ship that you could fly. We are not going to do that in this video because I couldn't get anything to populate this morning when I started to film this. And that is the Starfarer. The Starfarer is flyable, and from what I see, I've flown around quite a number of them. It seems to be a beautiful ship, and... It probably needs to be crewed. At one point in this video, you may or may not see me landing over at one of the cryoastro cryo stations. And some idiot, well, he's not an idiot. He's just taking advantage of being in the PTU and not having to have the reputation follow him through life. Um, he decides to um, shoot me down. Which I didn't realize he had the right to do until later because... For some reason, I had become an outlaw, and I didn't shoot anybody. I swear I didn't. I just uh, shot pirates, and I must have had a stray round go into another ship and kill it, but I doubt it. Um, something happened along the way, and I know that in the next patch update, that will probably just be wiped. I'm hoping that they do like at least two more of these updates to the PTU before they put it live, because... Between the frame rate issue and a couple of the other issues I'll point out in a little bit, it just doesn't seem ready. All right, so you got a little bit of uh, the gist of things that have changed. You can buy things. You can buy them 
in Area 18, and you can buy them here. So let's take a look at what buying things looks like. But first, I just want to show you what the keyboard commands look like now. So when we go over here, you actually get this cool little magnifying glass. So things have changed. Make sure you make note of the things that are most important to you. One of the things that's most important to me is right here by the G key, which I will move over to in a few seconds. And the G key is now used for both switching countermeasures and launching countermeasures. So a quick tap of the G key will switch between chaff and flare and holding down the G key will actually um, will actually dispense either a chaff or flare. I wonder if they could do it like in real life where um, it's automated. Uh, a lot of the current fighters uh, launch chaff and flare automated when they are being tracked by a missile or by anti-aircraft. So let's go do what I said we were going to do. We're going to go buy or try to buy some clothing. So here we are going into Cubby Blast. This will give us an idea of how to uh, make a purchase. So we're going to come over here and we're going to start taking a look at our spacesuits. So what you want to do is you want to use the mouse to move over to either try now or, well, this says equip now because I purchased it. But if you do the try or... Um, try on or the purchase you really need to use the f key to make that work it's not going to be using the mouse like you do in the inside of the hanger so it's just that you get an idea to look at it now you will see right there let's stop and take a look it says comes bundled with and it does not say anything about the rsi jetpack and that's important because I cannot do any mission at this point because I can't get out of my ship because I made a purchase and I don't know how to undo it at this point, but I will do something about it later. Um, the ones that you do buy on the Port Alisar space station do come with the, uh, the jetpacks. Down here they don't. And I don't know if jetpacks are sold separately now. I will do an update video on this later on. But this is all the cool stuff. So you can see all the different things that you could purchase. And just by going on, you could try it on, see how it looks. And you can purchase it and see what happens. So it just seems to be that things down here um, are not looking for you to be doing EVA like you would be doing on board the ships. Uh, it's just kind of weird. All right. So how am I feeling about the clothing at this point? I think it's... I think it's great. I think it's wonderful that they've added this to the game and they do give you a realistic economy in the game at this point, you know, for what you make and what you spend, it, you can see how it will work later on. I do think that for the time being, the uh, ship repairs, the uh, ship refueling and the uh, well, just ship maintenance overall is a little cheap and maintenance and, re and refueling tends to be a way of taking money out of the economy to avoid inflation. So expect that to go up when the game goes live. I don't know how far up it's going to go, but I do expect it to go up. I think that some of the prices of some of these things are outlandish because, you know, it's like they could have said things were 700. They could have gone with lower numbers. But I guess they're playing that game where they want you to feel like you really do accomplish things by giving you a lot of money for completing a particular mission and that's you know that's okay but in the grand scheme of things then you know 7,000 credits actually becomes equivalent to like 700 credits if you actually think about it right it's like they're just over inflating the cost of everything and over inflating your pay and you know they could they could have brought it down a little bit but nonetheless that just means you're going to be seeing a lot of zeros after all the money that you have one of the things that i'm doing here is that the frame rate in area 18 and the hangar has really really been updated so what i'm doing is i'm going to all the places in um in area 18 that used to slow down my computer a lot and they don't do it anymore it's actually seems to be like there was something done and it doesn't look like they toned down the quality. It looks like they actually moved it up. Hey, Ghostmaker, if you watch my video, um, thank you. <laughs> and if not, oh, somebody tell me who he, who he was. All right, let's move on to the next piece, which is going to be the candy that was given in this particular patch. And yet again, I have another thing I'm going to do before I move on to the next piece, and that's to bring you over here into one of the shops inside of Point Olisar. And 
You'll see that there's very similar spacesuits as to the one I have on here, but these over here, watch, um, I think I'm going to go to buy. Well, you will see. These here actually include the RSI jetpack, so it is kind of uh, annoying to me that the one I purchased doesn't have it, and I'm sure there's a way around it. I just haven't found my way out of it, but you see it right there, default RSI, default jetpack. I don't understand. I paid 3000 on the planet. Now, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. But nonetheless, it is something that will be explained to us or fixed sometime in the future. Now, I am. I was just in a mode that was in the try-on mode, and you could see my body actually clipping out of it. I'm sure that's going to be corrected in the future, too. All these things are pretty awesome. Um, all right, let's move on to what I promised you. We're going to go to the candy part of this. So now comes one of the biggest changes to what we've been seeing since the beginning. Well, it's the second biggest change. The biggest change I had was going from the Deluxe Hangar to the RSI's, not RSI, but the Revel and York Hangar. This is a little bit different. I am in my favorite hangar. I'm sorry, I love the Asteroid Hangar, and I am a pirate at heart, even though I run the Enablers, and we are not pirates, uh, but we do have pirate people in it. But this is the item port piece of it. If you look, I looked down on the ground, I lined up that dot, and I just put down one of um, the Puglisi uh, um, artifacts. We're going to go up here, and we're going to talk about item ports up here. They're hard to get at. It's a first pass. I was really aggravated with this, and I was on a rant the other night with the enablers when we did our Sunday night get-together. But I understand it. This is like a version 1 of this port, and we're going to give our feedback, and they're going to change it. In my opinion... If you're in augmented reality, you shouldn't have to line up a little tiny dot. It should be a bigger um, hitbox for you to hit. Um, there must be something in the CryEngine that makes them do it this way, or maybe they just didn't think about that yet. But you could see that you could put down a lot of different things, uh, calendar, jukebox. I don't see my liquor cabinet anywhere. I wonder if that's going to be somewhere else. Do be aware if you do put down one of the model cases, I do not know how to put the models inside of them yet. This is one of those things that I'm showing you trying to line up that item port. Here, when you have the item port aligned, you use the mouse button. Unlike when you're buying something, when you see the item port little dot, you use the F key. When you're buying something here, you use the mouse pointer. So this is an area where the rest of your hangar would be. Currently, they only have the center um, area of the hangars available to you. The rest of the hangars will be unlocked later on. Now here's the candy. It's the, it's the MISC Reliant, the Reliant Core. Now I will do an in-depth review of this vessel when it comes out inside of the, of the, uh, PU and you could fly it. Right now you can't fly it. It is a beautiful ship to me. I love MISC ships, guys. I'm a fan of the Freelancer. I absolutely, absolutely love the Freelancer. And uh, of course the Starfarer is an amazingly gorgeous ship. It's not one that I own or one that I'm probably going to own, but we are giving one away this week on Ben's Day, which would be awesome. Um, you will find item ports just sticking out here in the breeze. I'm sure that's going to be um, how to load different pieces of the ship that aren't on here. Maybe modules that go there, maybe cargo that goes there. Maybe if you have cargo in your hangar, you can... Uh, hook you know hit this item port and say load this cargo on there not sure yet um i could almost say that's probably definitely going to be what that one is um when i did this i was unable to sit inside of the reliant but you can see here this is like the ups fan like the uh well like a box truck right whereas the freelancer is like their 18 wheeler and of course the big hull series are like their well, like the cargo ships, or maybe like a train, you know, when you think of the Hull E. The cockpit is just absolutely gorgeous, and of course the Reliant flies in a number of different orientations. Well, two different orientations. The seats will actually spin, and it will either fly in a vertical alignment, think uh, portrait, or in a horizontal alignment, like you see it now, think landscape. And the whole... Um, it's not the wings themselves that shift, I believe. I think it's just the centerpiece sh um, turns when those things happen. Like, uh, 
you will find like the wings will go in a different configuration when you move and so will other parts of the ship so this will be a highly animated ship kind of like the uh like the like the uh oh god i'm losing my mind here oh boy i will remember it in just a few moments but it will be a very very highly animated ship all right so um Let's go see if we could talk about some item ports. What I'm trying to do is trying to see what these different item ports here are. But you'll notice that the guns, I've swapped these guns out. There were M3As on here, I believe, and now I put some long swords. And I'm just going to play with that and say we're going to put some missiles in here. I don't know where the missiles come out of. There's item ports on the end. I believe they're for more weapons or for the TV unit that you get with the... Uh, with the news van. But I'm very, very happy with the design of this. It is one of my favorite ships all of a sudden. Um, the Cartoon All, oh, that's the other one that was highly animated, is a beautiful ship in itself, but I don't know. I, I, I love the fact that I own two of them. I, I just think that this ship right here, it, it, it's a. It's a wonderful starter ship. I'm loving it more and more. The more I look at this, the more I like it. There are some glitches. You see that there. The reflection is showing up as a box. I am running a 970. So I don't know if it's my drivers. I just updated my drivers for new games that came out, specifically Overwatch. I'm not playing it, but that's what it said the update was for. And I don't remember that happening on ships before that update. Who knows? So... In here, I don't know what's going on. There were two artifacts in here, and they seem to be gone. And, of course, this is how you get to the rest of the game. Well, folks, let's uh, close this one out. I think it's absolutely unfair to give, like, I love this, I hate it, you know, any kind of a review on this particular patch because it's not fair at this point to review a beta of an alpha right it just isn't but what i can tell you is that frame rate issues have happened in every one of the ptu releases and seem to get somewhat fixed when it goes to the live server so that i expect to be gone later server lag here was incredibly high every time somebody zoned in or logged on, you would have a massive, um, a, a massive frame drop, and sometimes you would be l locked in place for a few moments. This is the Starfarer Gemini, and one of the big pieces of candy that was given in this patch is that it can fly. The Gemini is a, oh, it's just a wonderful ship, but it, it doesn't look that much different than the Starfarer itself, except for that big turret on top. And the green paint job, you know, it is in the uh, UEE Navy or Marine Corps colors, not sure which one it is. I think that the Starfarer is going to be one of the biggest reasons that people are going to be loving this patch. Because being able to fly it means you could take more of your friends out with you, right? Especially those that have the Gemini and have the three turrets instead of just the two turrets in the rear. Um, one thing I will tell you in this game is that if you do take out a big ship like that, do make sure that you have friends that are flying escort for you. Because the first thing everybody wants to do when they see a big ship is to take it down. As far as giving my... Uh, as far as saying what I'm most excited for when this patch goes live, it is persistence. I do want to feel like I'm doing something in the world, that something matters. My uh, thing that I'm most disappointed about is that they still don't have any female characters. It is, you know, I, I don't understand it at this point. And people say, ah, just calm down, it's an alpha. No, it, it does matter. It does absolutely matter. It matters to me. And I feel like that's something that they, they've been working on all this so much. How perfect does something have to be before Chris is going to allow it to come out? I mean, obviously, not that perfect because there's so many holes in this game as it is. And they're all getting plugged little by little. Why would you stop one whole section of people from being able to, well, role play and get into the game and, and, and feel like it matters? Now, with Persistence... That character model matters even more. 
and I'm going to drop it at that. So I was most disappointed in that. So that means that of all the other things that were released and that mattered in this, they seem to have done a good job. Now, I, like I said, I was extremely critical of their programming of the port system, item port system in the hangar, but I know it's version 1 given to us. It's probably version 10 internally, but version 1 given to us. And now that we can give our feedback, they'll be able to do something with that and make it even better. I'm very, very looking forward to this go live, going live because I can't wait to see more of my friends, more of my followers, more of my enabler um, organization mates and other people that I know in the game out there. Wow. We seem to have broken my nose, it looks like. Well, folks, I will give you a much more in-depth review of the Reliant. And I'll give you a flight test of the Gemini as soon as I can. Ben's Day will be recorded Thursday this week. Get your questions into starcitizenaa at gmail.com and put either Ben's Day or a question for Ben in the subject field. There's also an Ask Sandy coming. And if you can send to the same address, which is starcitizenaa at gmail.com and put Ask Sandy in the subject field. Send me your Sandy questions. Remember, those would have to be about marketing. All right. That is all I got for you folks. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.